Hey everyone, welcome to episode 15 of Resonate. And today we have a special guest with us, Oz. And our interview will be kind of centered about like doll collecting, especially with the male perspective, since I think doll collecting has historically kind of been like a female um, hobby, even though a lot of collectors who aren't do collect. And we'll just talk about some of the things that you might have encountered in the hobby and let us know your thoughts on that. So before we continue, let's talk about our dolls who we brought today and would like to share. So since Oz is our guest of honor, um, we'll have you go first. Okay, so this guy right here, his name is Hannah Shonen. He is uh, my doll zone moment. I bought him secondhand. I believe I'm the third owner. Um, I've had him for like a long time, actually. Um, I don't know yet what to do with him, but um, over time, I've not been so 100% uh, careful with him. So he has cracks all over the place, like right here. And I, I, honestly, I just really love him. Blank as well. And uh, cool. I've been in the hobby since 2011. And yet I've never done a face-up. <laughs> Same. Well, I've tried, but I'm like, it's not my jam. But I, I like I like how he's like one of your favorite dolls, um, even though he's not perfect. And I think that's cool because sometimes, you know, people only want the most perfect dolls or whatever. But like, I think that's a sign that like, hey, you really like this doll. You play with it. And, you know, wear and tear is inevitable, right? Right. Also, that uh, crack part, I thought it was just like part of the sculpt. Because, you know, oh, no. it's like mm. all the special parts lying around so he took a was it when i was building my desk which i'm still kind of building um a piece of it of thing fell on it and it cracked it oh, i think i have the painful. part right here yeah the parts right there saved until i could like glue it back on still looks that's great weird. though <laughs> And I think those dolls tend to just be really fragile as well, too. So even though, like, you weren't necessarily rough with it, like, it's just the way it's casted and sculpted. I think, like, you know, especially, like, the Empress, which is, the, I guess, the mermaid one. I, I remember a lot of people saying that there's a lot of, like, broken parts on that, too. But that's cool. I actually saw someone post this doll in Attics today, and I didn't think I would see it on the show. So that's, I'm like, I'm like ooh, <laughs> excited. I really well, like that doll. Yeah, they're really cool. Thank you. Well, uh, originally, uh, the moment and the Anson, the Anson's the version, the girl version, um, they weren't limited, but Dollzone was having so, uh, losing so much money replacing parts because they would get damaged in the mail. So they basically stopped selling them. That's that's fair, yeah. Like I figured, just from shipping alone, that guy would probably have to be wrapped up part piece by piece. I wouldn't ship you know, any type of th these dolls in, like, just a general bubble bag. Right. We worried yeah, to ship a doll like this drug. Yeah. He went, um, I bought them. They send them in a SD box, which I, they're original, originally in a SD box, but uh, the sender uh, inside of the SD box was Tupperware. Tupperware. <laughs> and each part was inside of a, a different Tupperware. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, that's rough. But he made it safe and sound. Yeah, he's <laughs> cute. I like, I, I like. really like, like, the flower-infused type of dolls. I don't know why. Anyways, Nova, you want to go next? Oh, yeah, I can. Um, oh, gosh, I need to look up his name. I think it's a... <laughs> you need to look up his name. <laughs> yeah, it, his name is really hard to say. Um, it's a soul doll, uh, Hyun, Hyun, H-Y-U-N-N. H-Y-U-N-N. He's like the, or Hyul, I think it is, H-Y-U-L-L. <laughs> yeah, he's got a really strange name. <laughs> but he's a soul doll boy. He's in their, uh, newer tan color. I've had him since 2020. I'm like, that is Yeah, light. it's really light. Yeah, but it's, they say it's their tan. He's almost as light as my, like... Yeah, he's lighter than me on camera, but he's supposed <laughs> to be their tan. That's crazy. Yeah, I've heard a few things about, like, Sodol 10, where it's not actually 10, and I'm, like, putting me off. Yeah, it's really light. But he's my Sodol boy. He stands really well. He's a good poser and stuff. Yeah. I like his sculpt. He came with a human head, too, but I love his uh, fangs and ears he has going on. Yeah, the ears are interesting. It's not just the typical elf ears. 
Yeah, he's supposed to be a vampire guy. Was this the doll that got misdelivered? No, that was the uh, lavender elf Okay. Dude. That okay, was also cool. a soul doll. Is and are you going to do the... Go on, go on us. Oh, sorry. Is he part of the tarot, the tarot release or the tarot series? No, um, they came out with a vampire series really quickly. It was like last year, early last year. Mm. And yeah, I have not done a face up on him yet, but I am going to sometime. I've just been slacking. Okay, <laughs> that was my question. We have a name. <laughs> that was my question. I'm like, it doesn't have a face up yet. I'm like, that's weird. What? Soon, <laughs> next time he appears. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to go next then, and Avari can go last. <laughs> so I didn't bring my um, dollies mate next time. I, I was I was looking at our last episode. I was like, oh, I'll bring her next time. <laughs> but I figured I would just show somebody that I bought recently. Not recently, probably okay within the past oh, six months. Cute. So oh this God. is my yeah doll's own Olga, and I'm like, oh, she's a little bat. <laughs> I love her yeah. face. And. Like, I got her from Christina. She had her in stock, oh. and it was, like, just $60, including shipping. No way. What? I can't believe yeah, I saw that. it. <laughs> I saw it on her um, Instagram. I'm like, I want it. And she's like, okay. And she mailed her in, like, a cute peach tea box. But, um, yeah, and it was painted. By, but she's actually really old, too. She used to be white skin, and, you know, doll zone white skin's pretty white. Yeah. It doesn't look as yellow on camera, but she's definitely yellowed. And... My hands are clean, but I know some people probably scream a little bit. But her f- face comes off. Her face, like trying not off. to. Yeah, like it comes off like this. I'm trying not to touch the side, but like it's like this. Oh. Oh, so uh, you can see oh. like the like that. So yeah. magnets. <laughs> so yeah, so this is my Olga, and I never renamed her. I thought she was just cute, and I'm like, oh, and I blame all you guys for enabling me. I started yeah. by, I got her a while ago, <laughs> but now I'm like, they're quite cute, so I like these little critter things. <laughs> yeah, adorable. Right? Yeah, she's awesome. I see Oz has awesome. his uh, car there, too. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is the white thing, too, and as you can see, he's like creamed out a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Doll's own wind skin is like super, like, Super yellow. Terrible. <laughs> yeah, and and I know that my long soul body that yellowed a lot faster than I expected to. So I just feel like white resin. I mean, it's just part of owning white resin is that it will always mellow some faster than others, and you can just only hope that they mellow <laughs> evenly. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta hope for the best. Eh? Yeah. So little critter. So but cute. um, yes. So Avari, let's see who you brought. Uh. I'm just repeating myself now because you know you you guys know her. She's a uh, Echo doll, Pepper, I believe. I still don't know her scope. I forgot about it, and uh, I'm too lazy to find out. She's making a reappearance because I just got home, and I'm like, all right, you know, I'm just gonna pull whoever's the closest to me. <laughs> Yeah, after doing 15 episodes, like, I think some people probably have some repeats, <laughs> like, because, we're, I mean, I would hope nobody would just buy a doll just to show a new doll on the show, but yeah, I think it's bound to happen, right? Because, like, I feel like I have maybe that many in the case that are ready to show, but the others are just heads I'll swap out, but other than that, I think it's going to happen. It's bound to happen. Yeah. She's pretty. I like seeing her. Thanks. I need to get her face redone. I don't like the fashion style she has need more fantasy she can be like a vampire girl or something she has kind of like the 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 goth glam vampire aesthetic going on yeah a little bit Alrighty, so let's get into the heart of the episode today so like we mentioned we have oz as our special guest today so i know you said that you started collecting in i believe was it 2011 so do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself oz sure uh okay so did you guys ever watch a show called uh, Cool Japan? No, I don't. It was like, I haven't seen that. It was like a show where they showed like uh, things that you could do in Japan and stuff like that. And uh, they had talked about dolls, and they showed I, the first the shot the the doll that they had showed was a, a Noah doll. And they were talking about how these dolls were made for adults and how they were really expensive. Um, if you've seen it in no way, you know that they're likely correct. So uh, they were talking about how like some people were creeped out by that and all that stuff. So I started uh, looking up 
these dolls to see what they were and stuff like that. And I came across uh, BJD Addicts on YouTube, and I reached out to Asenba, and uh, she answered a bunch of questions for me. She was actually really nice. And um, she pointed me out to a Facebook group where I made a friend. She was local and invited me to a meetup. And I went, I was the only boy there, which was kind of like nerve wracking. And everybody was like, oh, are you somebody's husband? Or are you somebody's ride? And I was like, no, I'm here to find out about dolls. And as soon as I said that, everybody was like, oh, here's my doll. And all of a sudden, everybody was handing me dolls to, like, weigh, to look, to play with. And everybody was just really welcoming. And after that, um, I got my first doll. Do you still have your first doll? I do. And he, I know I said Hannah Shonen is my favorite doll. But my first, first doll is a Resin Soul and which I bought from the marketplace <clears throat> on Den Noodles. He's cute. Thank you. I need to buy him a new wig. I feel like awesome. I have a yeah. soft spot for like rest and soul dolls, even though I don't I have them it. for too long. I just kind of, ha- I just really like how they make, how versatile they can be. And then I, I right. talk about it a lot, but then I don't buy any. Soon. <laughs> My face is so red. Hang on. I think it's the concept, the fact that they go the extra mile for, you know, their customers and they're definitely at an affordable price point for those who might be a little bit intimidated to spend a little bit more. So I like what they do. Um, I I think, I think it's really cool, like what they do and what they offer because no other company does what they, what they do really. And at such a great price point. And even the more expensive ones, they still won't do that. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so I, I like this meetup that you talked about. Like, that sounds really awesome. Like, it sounds like you have a really neat and welcoming and friendly crew where you are. And the fact that people are like, hey, take this doll, play with it, touch it, tell me what you think. I, I think that's really awesome. Like, I feel like sometimes other collectors aren't as, you know, fortunate to have such a welcoming group nearby. Well, I want to say that, that was that. that was a very positive like first impression into the hobby. Right. Um. So that was my first meetup, and I was lucky enough to, have, like you guys said, I was very uh, I was welcomed, and everybody was super cool. But um, not everybody at that meetup stayed in the hobby. So as soon as like that uh that group kind of branched out or moved out or whatever, like my local meetups were no everybody was just mean about certain things so uh, i have i stopped going to meetups for like probably two three years and then uh, i started going to meetups again i found a local south southern california group and they're all really super nice and it was started by one of the people who was originally at that first meetup and Every time I go and they have new people or stuff like that, I try to be that person who's like, oh, here's the doll. Hold it. You know, play with it. You know, and, you know, at every meetup, there's also that one doll who gets pants because everybody wants to talk about, like, whatever parts. So, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that always tends to be my doll. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, so I guess like with your your that that first time that we had that meetup um, before you actually had that really positive experience, do you know why people were acting a certain way towards you, or was do you, I don't know if you would flat out know, but do you have any guesses why they would be that way or something? Um, well, I know I've had like two in two uh, situations. One of them was the uh, the resident soul doll that I showed. Uh, he his boyfriend's a Eiffel House jid, and somebody was like, "Why why did you pair such a cheap dog with like this beautiful Eiffel?" And they had like a they legit had a problem with me pairing two dolls together, one from a cheap company and one from, uh, a expensive company. So I didn't understand that. I was like, "True, okay, like, especially if they still look cute together in pictures and stuff." Oh, they look adorable, especially because the Eiffel House boy can lift them up on shoulders. So I'm about it. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that is awesome. 
So um, first, uh, the second time, I believe uh, somebody made a big deal about me being a guy meetup because till then I was the only guy. Uh, they were saying that they didn't feel safe with a guy there. That I was like saying that I like dolls, be around girls and stuff like that. And I, they thought that it was not a safe space for them and stuff like that. But to that, I was like, I'm gay. <laughs> My boyfriend would go with me and he would sit in the car waiting for me and stuff. So, um, I was like, uh, trust me, like, you know, nothing's going to happen to you guys. The worst thing that could happen is me, like, probably, like, uh, being weird and, like, being shy and not talk to somebody. But, you know, after a minute, I, after I, uh, I feel more comfortable, I start, like, saying, like, oh, hey, how are you guys? And, well, but, yeah. Those were the two instances that I can remember that uh, at first uh, it started getting like, kind of weird. That's so bizarre to me. I, 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 I find like I find like it's so amusing how, you know, because obviously homophobia still exists in the U.S., that they had no problem with the male-male pairing, but they had a problem with the fact that it was a cheaper doll and a more expensive doll paired together, which to me is just like, what? I mean, both would be bad, but like it's just so unbelievably yeah, petty. Yeah, the prejudice <laughs> against like against resin soul dolls for for some reason like people just like to pick on the brand not really sure why just because they cheat. i don't understand because they're they're really like if you email son and tell him like hey can i get this doll in this color he'll ask you if you can mail him like a thing of that color and they'll do it or like if you say like hey can i get this head with elf ears they'll do it or like you know they're so accommodating and they're the only doll that I've ever bought that had no seam line. Yeah. Sun's a very nice, uh, very nice seller. <laughs> yeah, he is super cool. And, like, if you email him, he, like, he'll get to you probably, like, the next day. So, um, the only thing is they will now tell you when they ship the doll. Oh, It'll yeah. Magically, <laughs> yeah. Magically appear at your house like a month later, but they never tell you that they ship it. Dude, one month, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, they actually yeah. ship so fast. They charge, like, I guess a normal amount for shipping from China, and then, like, a month later, it just kind of show up. I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't even know it was already finished making. They already finished making them. I guess, like, with that group... You haven't, did you move and you just don't go back or are they still around and you just don't hang out with those people? Well, from what I understand, like, uh, do you guys remember Miss Cholong? She was yes. A, okay, was so it Elf Doll? Wait, no, not Elf Doll. Was uh, it? It was, what's the company that sells like a lot of dresses and shoes? Was it Doll Heart? No, that's not okay. Doll Heart. Doll heart. So she was a doll heart dealer and she used to have all these meetups where like she was to sell merchandise for them and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And always like the best thing like you waited all year long for it. And you'd meet all these people. So like after she quit and uh she quit being the sales rep for them and she was no longer in a hobby. After that, like the meetups started getting weird. Because like people were like Holding their own meetups, uh, they were being selective of who they want to invite or who not. Yeah, that's awkward. That's, that's rude. <laughs> rude. Yeah, and I think I don't know. Like for me, because I, I I've always liked BJDs and I collect other dolls too. But I'm always excited when I meet another collector. I'm like, ooh, this is a possibility for a new friend. And I'm always glad that people want to like you know meet up, talk. You know, have similar interests. Like, I think it's it's good for your soul and your psyche to interact with people who are like minded. And it's weird how people just want to be exclusionary, especially if no one did anything offensive or wrong or anything to jeopardize anybody's safety. So, yeah. And do you collect only BJDs, Oz, or do you collect other dolls too? Uh, no, just BJDs. Uh, okay. So now that you brought that up. Um, and this has to do with the whole being a guy in the hobby. Um, I wanted to get uh, Asana, uh, the Asana uh, 
Waititi. Oh. And when I wanted to be one, oh, I yeah. uh, um, getting myself to actually order it or buy it or anything because the whole idea that guys only get DDs because they're perverted or whatnot. Like, have you guys heard that? Yeah, a little bit. On the vinyl yeah. side of the hobby, like, people are kind of, like, pinning the male gender on, like, being perverts for ordering vinyl dolls. Yeah. Because there are certain products out there <laughs> that are very yeah. uh, disturbing. Right. Yeah, so that, that actually kept me from getting the awesome uh, DD. Up until now, like, I still think about, like, oh, should I like, look for one right now? I don't want to, like, I, I don't know. I'm just worried about being looked at kind of weird because I own a DD. Yeah, that that's fair. I don't. I don't understand why people would just pin it on or like just blanket every guy in the hobby to be pervert. But uh it's it sucks that people treat you like that just because you want like a doll. It it makes no sense. Like let people enjoy what they want. You know. If you want that doll I See those is like an anime style doll too, yeah. like the Dolphy Dreams. They remind me of like something an anime fan would collect. Right, right. <laughs> people are just so mean. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know how to put this to word. Like people are just I feel like people are just picking fight anytime they want, anytime they, they feel like they can. If you want that dog, go get it us. Like seriously, people suck. <laughs> don't listen yeah, to and it. It, to me it's crazy because I feel like if somebody wanted to I guess quote unquote be a pervert with their doll, which is such a weird thing to even say and I'm like it just sounds weird even when I like vocalize it um who cares like provided you aren't subjecting somebody to that situation like if it's you know because you need consent in that in that area like <laughs> I mean who cares right like and, 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 like obvious consent's important but like unless you're being weird about it then I don't see what's what's the purpose like you could like dolls with big bust I mean a lot of girls do a lot of females do. do women <laughs> um yeah they love big busted dolls and I, I don't see why if you're a male who likes a big busted doll like why would you be you know pointed out as like a pervert or something like that's just crazy oh, women who collect like the doll that has the anaconda <laughs> yeah yeah that too i was thinking about that this is definitely double standard because like why the because the the guy who wants to collect dd is like being dragged through the mud, but the females collectors that like want to have a collection of penis isn't like is somehow empowering while they again dragging the male through the mud. I don't I don't get that. I think it's like a double standard because like if men own this doll you're you're um uh, subjugating the the not subjugating, you're um I forgot the word. You're sexualizing or fetishizing a woman's body, so it's looked down upon because uh, since it's happened so long, now a guy can't cut a break from that because now it's just a norm. Oh, you have a dog with a big butt, so you know you're uh, defined. I think like women who own dolls, not not dolls, but I'm you know like if a woman does something, it's empowering empowering her. So it's kind of like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you do. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a lose-lose situation in here. Point, just do it anyway. Like, get the dolls that make you happy in your collection. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, I'm all for that. People tell me don't... I actually have people telling me, like, don't ship, don't, like, pair my female dolls together because it's, like, against something i don't remember what they said like it was like against the norm or something like that i'm like uh, homophobia that i mentioned earlier like that's <laughs> totally alive and kicking in the u.s yeah, I so, know, right? and it just happened yeah. like a year ago too i'm like it's 2020 man go educate yourself right yeah. <laughs> it's it's weird because i feel like it's more acceptable to have a male gay couple than it is to have like female gay couples in the doll pairings but at the end of the day i'm also like these are just dolls 
And if people want to, you know, have their own story, their own characters, whether it be personal experience or whatever, then so be it. Like, you don't know these people. And provided they aren't putting you in a weird situation or subjecting you to stuff that you don't want to be subjected to, there's really no problem. And mind your own business. (laughs) That's my philosophy. (laughs) So, but like, I have characters for your dolls, too. Yeah. As long as you're not, as long as it's legal and you're not like harming anyone, then do what you want, right? Right. So, Oz, like, is your experience in the hobby still positive? You would say, or have has the have those instances kind of left like a bad taste in your mouth, or you're just like, whatever? Like, does it make you think twice about sharing what you what you like with people? No, I think I think I have like a bad experience like once a year or something. Like something dumb will happen, but um, I mean, especially now because of COVID and stuff, like meetups are not a thing right now um i've had virtual meetups those are fun and um i've been lucky where i've made a good amount of doll friends where everything's uh pretty positive and and it's it's like we'll meet up for dolls but then we'll end up at korean barbecue or we'll meet up with dolls and end up at a like a coffee shop so it's uh it's more like a friend thing and it's not just a doll thing that's nice. I wish you guys were closer to me. <laughs> right. I'm just here by myself with my dolls, like just sitting in the park, like alone with my dolls. It's just sitting on my hand, like, what am I going to do here? Yeah, it's that's that's sad. <laughs> that's sad. But um, but you met with Chaka when she was in um in your area. Yeah. But I have to say, having doll friends in person is pretty cool. Like one of my good friends, Mickey. I met him through pull-ups, and he actually started getting into beach ball jointed dolls. But he he started off in pull-ups because he thought they were cheaper than Blythe's, and oh, no. I guess ball jointed dolls. So it was kind of like a cheaper doll for him to go to go to. And um, it, it's fun. Like we've we've became friends because we did a meetup at a public library. And he was the only guy there, but it, he did, like, some quick tutorials on how to do, like, some makeup. And then, of course, people brought their dolls, so we all kind of admired each other's dolls. And I think they might have had lunch beforehand, but I kind of was late um, because they were so far away from where I lived. And I was like, where is this library? So, you know, but the long story short is that, like, Mickey and I started talking, and it's been fun, like, having, you know, not just a doll friend, but also, like, a good friend through through the hobby right and you know whether it be if i go and hang out with him well not so much now because you know covid um, i would bring like a doll and he would be like "Ooh, tell me more about her and you know just sharing tips and stuff and then it was fun going to see his doll room and looking at his collection and seeing how he organized his stuff and he does some little small dioramas so i was able to plot my doll in a diorama and take photos but it's it's really a lot of fun and i hope people are able to have that experience. And I know it can be scary going to doll meets, especially, you know, there's a lot of judgment that goes on in this hobby, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. But when you make the friendships, like it's, it's so much fun. It's, it's awesome. And I hope I can have more friends like that. Um, just, just in general, there's apparently like some users in Houston, but it's not like users. There's some hobbyists in Houston. It's my work brain going on. Um, but I don't know if they do meets very often and it can be tricky because if you have somebody who is, weird or maybe not behaving as appropriately because you know they stepped over some boundaries or something then you don't want them at your house like I get that (laughs) so you know it's always tricky to have like house meets and maybe not include somebody and then or doing a public meet it's it's tricky I I haven't been to you know private meets unless I was just hanging out with my friend Mickey because I also don't like going to people's houses that I don't know (laughs) it's just just I don't like that so I need to know you a little bit first before we start hanging out at like personal spaces and um i hope i can meet more doll people if i can if i find out somebody has dolls or they're interested then i'm like oh my god let's be friends <laughs> so yeah I, what about you nova i guess you, you had mentioned before that you had like some collector collectors like collecting scene where you are yeah there's a there, before covid there were a couple doll meets because i'm in a the denver colorado area and there's a pretty active group around here and i've went to like two or three meets before COVID that were pretty fun. Yeah. Hopefully Avari one day, one day soon. If not, we can do our own meet. <laughs> right. I'll meet you at the park. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so like Oz, in your experience, do you think that there is necessarily a stigma around people who collect, collect dolls 
And then let's take it up a notch by saying BJDs. Because for me, like I've collected all sorts of dolls and there's a lot of men in the hobby. Uh, so for me, I, I don't understand why there's so much hate in the ball jointed doll hobby because a lot of fashion doll collectors are, are men. Right. Um, I don't think it's hate. I think it's more like people don't realize that, um, like you said, you know how you said that you make, uh, you have that friend where you go to his house and he collects life some other dolls. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are focusing too much on people's dolls and not on the collector. Like, how can I explain? So you go to a meetup and you see somebody with the same kind of doll that you have and you think like, oh my God, we're going to be like the best of friends. Thing I like. But the thing is like, uh, just like, like a person, like not only do I collect BJDs, but I'm also gay. I'm also Hispanic. I'm also like the youngest of four, you know? So people don't take in consideration like the whole aspect of a person and they just think like, oh, um, this person collects the same doll I do. So we're going to be friends of friends. And you realize that, you know, this person just likes the same doll, but they completely into something else. You guys don't click and it's awkward after. So I think a lot of people are short-sighted when meeting people at, at meetups. So I think that's why, like, some guys will get, like, the short end of the stick because people will just focus on the fact that they're a guy and not, they won't think about, like, what else, like, do they collect, like, like, I know in the Barbie collection thing, there's, like, a hobby. There's, uh, like, the massive uh, collectors are mostly guys. And, um, like I said, I think I think I, I met one person who lives in New York who, who is super into Barbies, and he bought his first BJD. And he says that he, um, that people find it weird that he has Barbies, but when he has a BJD, nobody, like, blinked an eye yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I know so many male like collectors who who buy fashion dolls like Barbie integrity dolls that it's like <laughs> it's like to me that's almost like okay, that's they're they're just part of the hobby, right? But yeah, that's that's interesting to hear that he had a different experience in regards to that. Yeah, I feel well, like the same oh, Sorry, go you go, you go. Well, um, up until last year, I've only had boy dolls. Um, I know I I had a girl doll that I bought like a couple years ago, but it's a a, a YoSD. It's a Zoom Glot, and the body is like unisex, so it doesn't have like any features. Um, I was always worried of having an actual girl doll because like you know uh, they're detailed in certain areas, so I was always scared like. If I have a girl doll, I don't want to be like classified like, what is he doing with that doll? Or like, you know, like people, the first thing non doll collectors will ask is like, is that a sex doll? And you're like, why would it be a sex doll? It's like this big. So, what do you I, even do with the I, doll this size? <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that always stopped me from actually buying a girl doll. And then last year, um, I bought my, uh, my doll's own Naruga. And that was my first girl doll. And like, I mean, I like, I like, I have girly boys who wear like, you know, girl, girl, kind of girl clothes. But having a girl doll, like, it's, it's crazy because you're thrown into like frilly dresses. And like, you know, the first thing you want to do is like, oh my God, I want to get this puffy dress and I want to get this like, super wavy wig and you know you want to girl it up and i just realized i'm gayer than i think i am <laughs> she's a super cute doll too so i could yeah, see like I love wanting to put her in some cute stuff i mean i found this lady who uh sews uh into a and i bought a dress i just ordered another because like i'm telling you like you see these dresses and they're so frilly and like you automatically want to like girl that girl it up, you know. It's adorable so, so that. This is, my, this is my first girl. This is uh, my doll's own Naruga. She's cool. I really liked her a lot. She's so limited, though. 
I know. Very. I really wanted the Taurus one because uh, mm-hmm. it's my side. Mm. Okay, yeah. those are cute. But at the time, it was I couldn't afford her, so I was just kind of like let it go, and now I'm kind of regretting it. <laughs> maybe they'll re-release it they've been re-releasing some dolls lately yeah, so maybe. yeah but that, that's to me it's sad because i don't think obviously i think we're all in agreement that that shouldn't put you off from buying a female doll because i don't know it's weird because like i remember in addicts this this lady posted photos of i think it was the two 2d doll body with the snake penises and like the double dong. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> no, no, and double there was dong. also the the Reddit meme about like having like the 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 penis part. It's like with two shafts. <laughs> I feel like should I be saying this? Um, <laughs> but like all, you know, all that stuff. And then there's that and big we'll snake, man. literally a snake. Like I, I was like, and people were like, oh yes, that's awesome. Oh no, no, no falls. <laughs> but then, um, but the people are like, yes, this is awesome. I I love it. And then like if someone was to post, I don't know. I guess. I don't know, like female doll, and I don't know. It's just like if you're just worried about the genitalia, like literally, like it's not detailed as I see some of the penis parts that they make in this hobby. Like <laughs> with female um, parts, like it's usually just like a carved line, and that's it. Yeah. Like I feel like it's uh, just so not a script. <laughs> you have an angelophilia. I mean, yeah. I heard that. I, I hear angelophilia. Is it detailed? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have I used to have one. Oh wow. I, I'm gonna see. It might not be safe. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna be safe for work. So. Right, let me see. <laughs> I wanna take a look because I'm curious about this. But also like, you know, I think certain aesthetics they attract certain people, but I know like it's on the confession blogs, people really, really hate how how kind of like pervy the Angel Philia dolls look, but I'm like I don't know, oh, yeah, I'm like whatever, it's your money. <laughs> it's your money like i don't i really don't care how people spend their money provided they aren't supporting like you know <laughs> like slavery or something with it you know what i mean but like <laughs> at the end of the day if you're buying a doll that you like i'm great at minding my own business so l- let me see i, I can't <laughs> i can't yeah i mean oh. if you haven't seen it uh feel free to google it if you're over 18 if you're not over 18 don't <laughs> I mean, I guess you could because it's just it's just more detailed. But I don't think it's necessarily bad. Like you know, it's uh, weird because some things... of their promo photos might not be okay. Some of them, yeah, they might be evocative of some inappropriate yeah. like ages or something. But um, but yeah, no, for me, like so the posing I think would be significant in that regard. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't, I actually don't think the genitalia on the female. I mean, it's not like you can really see any sex organs. You just see like <laughs> you just see like you know a little bit more detailed before. Yeah. You know, but like, but I think female body parts have always been overly sexualized, even though it's not anything different from looking at a, like, I guess, penis or something, you know? So I think, I like, for the individual, I think the only question I have for that, um, obviously the front is detailed appropriately or adequately, but um, Angelophilia has a sculpted butthole. They do. I did not. <laughs> I forgot about that. They do. They do. <laughs> My fiance like, was very uncomfortable looking at them. <laughs> I just thought it was really funny. Is it more uncomfortable than looking at the rear end of your cat? <laughs> I'm just saying. Cats <laughs> don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think like it's. There's a certain level of realism that Angelophilia achieves, whether it be from, you know, allegedly pervy intentions or, you know, wanting to sculpt something a little bit more detailed. But I can I can appreciate that, too, because, like, why not? <laughs> there are some really, like, detailed penis parts out there, like, really detailed. So why wouldn't there be other parts that are a little bit more detailed? I don't know. Is there, though? I mean... I have oh, yeah. no idea. I don't, I don't collect male dolls, so... I, I look at the pictures online because yeah. people talk about them and I'm like, what's going on? And I'm like, ooh, okay. I think yeah, that's there's... more to like the SDs though because I mean, I have a lot of male MSD dolls that aren't like, they don't have the crazy attachments or anything. They just have like yeah. a little a little thing. <laughs> and all dolls that I own look like a thumb. Like, this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean... Okay. On that note, um, I did buy a uh, what is it, doll? 
dollhouse? No. Uh, something house A. Dollhouse A? Oh, is it doll family A or oh, wait, no? I'm yeah. they... So I bought a doll family A. Uh, diamond. Is it H or A? Okay, uh, it, go on. I'm sorry, go on. They have A and H, but they're two different companies. And I bought uh, one from Doll Family A, and they were having an event where they give you hands and they give you JJ parts. And I was like, oh, but what are JJ parts? And I was like, I'm about it. Free stuff. Who's going to like say no? And they, uh, the JJ parts are assortment of uh, boy pins. <laughs> dongs. A <laughs> box of dongs. <laughs> This episode is Why sold they call on the JJ parts. <laughs> That's an interesting choice Dolph- for a name. So Doll Family Age, their JJ parts is uh they're all like regular looking JJ parts, but one of them has like a, a tiny elephant just sitting on top of one of the parts. I'm sorry, what? And, <laughs> wow, so they, okay. So he comes with like little resin underwear that pops off and you put the parts there. I've not put any of the parts on him because oh. they're just, uh, so uh, what is it? Uh, Doll Family Age comes with one that has an elephant sitting on top of it. And the one that I got was from Doll Family A, which is basically, he has a giant snake one. Oh, it's that one. Yeah, so he has like a baby snake one, and he has a giant <laughs> anaconda. That's a post I remember from Addicts, and I guess I can share it because like it's not like we're monetized I, anyway. I and it's why. not for children. It's not like we're monetized anyway. <laughs> it's not like we're monetized anyway. It's not like, we're, and it's also not a child. This is channel, for educational also, like, purposes. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> I. <laughs> yeah. So I. I can share like the one on Alice's collection, but you can't really see because it's so blurry. Because I know sometimes this is censorship. They don't want um, doll companies don't usually will censor that kind of stuff out. Um, but you can't really see it, but you can see the anaconda. So let me let me share my screen. <laughs> you want me to get them out? <laughs> yeah, if you want, you can show us in a person, and then while you do that, I'll I'll show <laughs> what it looks like um, on on the um on the company promo photos okay i'll be right back let me go get them okay <laughs> bam you got some dongs there <laughs> Wait, hang on let me let me open it because i have to switch tab yeah okay the the resin underwear is funny i don't know why it's just half it of just the looks underwear. so strange <laughs> i think it's cool in concept but like <laughs> It is kind of weird. It's, it's very Ken doll. Very yeah. provocative of Ken doll. <laughs> very provocative Ken. <laughs> so let me see um, while Oz goes, gets his parts. Like, this episode, I feel like it's kind of, like, weird in the sense that we're like, and now we're looking at, like, penis parts. <laughs> kind of deviated a little bit. But um, it's, just, it's just a conversation. <laughs> um, let me pull up, because I know her name was Anne. Anne in BJD Addicts, who posted pictures of her snake doll uh, well not the snake doll but the anaconda on her doll and i remember just being like this is amazing like what and mm-hmm. what on earth <laughs> let me see if i can pull that up and um i might have to type in snake i feel weird typing some of this stuff out <laughs> some of the other stuff That's a huge box. This is the baby. I got it's like funny. baby snake, baby snake, <laughs> baby snake, which I don't understand what the deal with the snake. And this is the anaconda one. That is huge. This is my full, uh, full grown. <laughs> it's like the size anaconda. of your head, <laughs> and oh, I never figured yeah. it would be like that size. Literally, yeah. like the size of like a doll arm. <laughs> you can actually take photo of the head and pretend that like, it's a 
pet snake, like a pet doll, and people would buy it. Probably, yeah. <laughs> it's super detailed. That's the scary part. <laughs> Uh, so, I would I like a pet snake doll, actual pet snake doll, like uh, that detail, please. Can anyone do that? <laughs> I mean, you could, you could buy it. Let me let me let me see. <laughs> buy <if>, like, <laughs> <laughs> Let me pull up this one. Um, so Anne in Attic shared it. I I still remember when I saw this pose and Krumlkex, and her picture gets recycled all the time on Attics, but th this is a clear picture of what you can expect in terms of dolly parts. Yeah, um, the baby snake is fun. <laughs> and then apparently this one is also pierced, so you can have a Prince oh, Albert going on. I thought that was just a dot. Yeah. I <laughs> Yeah, I have all of them. Uh, how do I... <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, I have a bag full of dolphins. <laughs> There's one that's semi-erect, the other one's like not erect at all, and the other one's curved. Yeah, yeah and they, they have, have like some really small ones too. Like they I'm... have one for every stage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So. Yeah, that's cool. I actually don't know anybody who has this body short of, you know, Anne's photos and addicts. But I remember when she posted it, everyone's like, oh my word. And just this photo itself had like 193 like <laughs> likes. <laughs> yeah. So there goes the snake. And it's weird how like that that like people are like look at that humor and they love it. But if you have something a little bit more detailed for a female doll, it's like, okay, you're a pervert. Yeah. You're a pervert. <laughs> Like I, I, I think just... someone uh, in the uh, Antrophilia group or something like they post on a different group. I don't remember the group's names. Uh, they post like the size difference of like the Antrophilia bus, and they had to take it down because they were flag. They do look very real, though. Yeah, they they, they look very real. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook is, like, weirdly strange about a lot of things. So, yeah, like, I know on Instagram, they allow, like, female nudity to be on there. That's, like, art. But, again, it's so loosely defined that mm -hmm. if you show any nip, it's, like, block or delete. Let's flag it, shadow ban, whatever. So, yeah, that's... It's, it's wild. Like, there's clearly, as you can see, there's a lot of options in the doll hobby. So <laughs> there's something for everybody. But <laughs> let's see, I guess what's some of the conversation that Nova has lovingly prepared for us. So Oz, like, as a collector, like, do you want to have more female dolls? Are you happy with, like, you know, just having a harem of mostly men? Or was it really just a decision of being labeled kind of like something unpleasant? really affecting you to like not acquire any more female dolls? Well, I think everybody in this hobby can this hobby if you buy a cookie. I know if you give it a mouse a cookie, because like you start off like, oh I want one, but that one needs a friend and that one needs a boyfriend yeah. and that boyfriend needs a little sister or whatever. <laughs> so dolls always multiply. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, after getting my Naruga, um, I actually got Doll's Own Man, so I got a second one. But this one is an MSD as well. Oh, I sold you that doll. And... Yes, yes you did. I remember that. <laughs> is that the doll of Yeah, ours? that is the doll, the doll that I was <laughs> scam out of. <laughs> well, she has a good home now. Yeah. She's I'm loved. not sure. Eighty dollar dress, so she's loved. <laughs> yeah, she is well loved. Like if she's just in my in my closet, she would just be sitting there naked because I, I'm I'm too lazy. For okay. Those. So she's wearing <laughs> okay. So, like I'm really weird about dolls not having undies, so she's wearing panties and everything. she's really well taken care of. That's nice. But um, it yeah. so after getting my Naruga. Uh, I decided, well, not decided, I think she just kind of developed the character of her own where um, she's actually going to be a lesbian. So she needs a girlfriend. I approve. <laughs> Do you have any sculpts in mind? Yes. Oh, God, yes. I made a list. 
and I went through it, and the only thing I could find that would make uh, a good pairing for her was the uh, uh, Doll Chateau Angel Girl, the the MSD, the one, the green one. Nicola. Yeah, so that's oh, gonna be huh. her girlfriend. As soon as I finish, it's my gonna be adorable. Week, So I plan on getting, um, I decided I want to get a SD girl. I just want to find a sculpt that really draws me towards that. You seem to like Dolls All and Doll Chateau like girl sculpt. Well, I, I'm not going to lie, like lately I've been uh, more into fantasy types. So. Um, so if you ask anybody about like centaur dolls, the first person they'll throw at you is me. So I'm known as the centaur guy. Yeah, you have a uh, really cool herd of centaurs. <laughs> it's funny because I was looking for somebody to um, to split a, a Lutz a centaur body with. And I kept um, messaging everybody who I knew was like, hey, can you help me find somebody who... And this was on Facebook, and everybody kept forwarding me my, my Instagram, saying, yeah, this guy's, like, totally into, like, centaurs. Hit him up. And I was like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Do you have a Dora? Dora? She's a doll chateau. She's, like, the small centaur. I recently got her, and she's off for her face up, but she's the one who's, like, one-six scale. She has oh. little antlers and stuff. Oh, Ada. No. We talked about her in the last episode, but um, no, it's um, Doll Chateau Dora. She was is supposed that... to be like, n- n- I think like Noah's little sister or something. Yeah. Oh, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, I used to have an Ada and it was super difficult to work with. So like I ended up selling it and I swore never again to get any kind of USD. Like... That's fair. Yeah, um, it's the the centaur body for Doll Chateau. Um, we I actually showed her when she came in one of the earlier videos that we posted, but it posts not too badly. I was really surprised. I thought it'd be crap like the rest of their other doll posing, but <laughs> but this one was actually pretty pretty decent. So um, I'll have to sh- sh- send you some pictures uh, of the body, but it stands pretty well, and I think like it can hold different like poses, like nothing too crazy, but it's not as frustrating as for me like the K eleven body or the K six K seven K eleven can't remember. It's the one that the Barbara, the Lydia, they come on the horrible body. Um, but, oh yeah, those yeah. are only aesthetic. They cannot pose at all. They just kind of like flop it back. Yeah, for sure. But um, but the, the Dora, is, I would say she's definitely one of the better designed dolls that they have. Is she bigger than the Ada? She is definitely know. bigger than Ada. She, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She's yeah. She like. Let's see. I don't have her. I have. I put her away back in the box because her head is off right now. But she's like this big. This is like not helpful. But she's like this big. <laughs> I think <laughs> For, like, she's about like thirty centimeters tall. I believe. The Ada, the body was literally the size. Yeah, no, she's yeah. a lot bigger than that. She's kind of like probably slightly. I don't know if you do. You have Callie from Dream Valley. She's kind of like a giraffe, not really a centaur. Oh, um, my giraffe. Uh, yeah, I don't know if Oz has um, Callie. Um, no, I passed on that too. I couldn't justify buying that one or the the S, uh, MSD boy. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. okay, the MSD. I have him on layaway. It's just so much money. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so, the chaos. Uh, I think Dora is bigger than Ko actually. Kelly. Chaos is the MSD. Yeah, I think she's bigger too because she's considered like within one six. I think you said Callie was like one eighth. Yeah. So a little bit smaller. Oh, no, I said Chaos. The... Oh, Chaos? Oh, oh the, the bigger one. Star? Oh, the, the, the Santa boy. Yeah, the he's wolf. really cool. I think he's pretty big. I think he's mini size, right? He's a little. Oh, he's a... Yeah, he's a Misty. I think he's a little bit bigger. Like, he's about 50, 50 something. Oh wow! Okay, that's almost like small SD size getting in that territory because some yeah. of the early it was early ones were like fifty eight centimeter. He's so like, he's like a very in between from what I've seen. I don't have him. Are you getting that one, Oz? Huh? Are you getting the Chaos yeah. Centaur? I am. Uh, I'm awesome. really upset though. 
receive their so many things. My dealer received one. So as I guess like um if you were to give advice to other guys who are interested in the hobby, what would you tell them? Um, honestly, I would say do you. Just go and be you because, I mean, there's no actual way of, like, joining the hobby. There's no actual way of being part of the hobby. Just go in, find what you like, be part of what you like, and do you. I mean, because if you sit there and worry about like how you're gonna fit in or or how or how to act or how to be or stuff like that, like you're not really gonna enjoy yourself and it's not gonna be an enjoyable hobby for you and you're probably just gonna give up on it. That's fair. And I mean, it, it's, if you come into it just being you or whatever, you're gonna realize that this is a hobby full of weirdos and it's a fun group. <laughs> It really Definitely. is just like a hobby of like a bunch of adults with dolls. So like, <laughs> don't take yeah. it too seriously. Exactly. And I think part of it, it's like we have a unifying interest, which are dolls. But at the end of the day, like how you treat people, I, I would hope that's how you live your life, right? Like you treat people with respect. And it's it's not just about the dolls because there's people behind them. And I think sometimes that gets lost on on some collectors in the hobby. I think that gets lost actually quite a bit. So um, let's see, I guess I had one more. So like, I guess what inspires you most about this hobby? This is kind of like a bonus question. Like, do you make or create anything for your dolls? And that can be also characters if you want to include that. Or do you make physical goods for them? Like what, what's your favorite part about the hobby? My favorite part of the hobby is basically when I first started the hobby. So when I was waiting for my resin soul app, I made friends with this uh, wonderful person and, uh, named Catherine in Hawaii. And she basically, um, we, made, we made friends and uh, I, we told her, we, I told her like what brought me into the hobby and all this stuff. And she literally was like, I have a doll that I do nothing with. What's your address? You can have it. What? Wow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and he literally shipped me a soul doll loon. Wow. Damn. I was just like, whoa. At first, I was just like, I can't accept that because that's a pricey gift. And I was like, how much are you selling it for? I'll pay it. And she was just like, no. She's like, I. She's like, I don't want to go through the trouble of like posting it up or sales that. Or She's like, and she's like, you seem like really interested in hobby, and she's like, you can have it. And I was like, wow. Like at first, I was just like, okay, she must be joking. She's pulling my leg or something. But then it showed up at my house. And, oh. That's so I think amazing. It is. That's it's awesome. super amazing. And I I talked to her, and um, one day when I have disposable income, uh, I totally want to do the same. Like I totally want to reach out to somebody who's new and and like give them a doll because like i think that in itself i mean people like especially if you're brand new into this hobby you think to yourself like you're overwhelmed by like a 200 dollar doll or a 500 hundred dollar doll or like if you want to go like super extra like a thousand dollar doll so even receiving like something as small as like you know a resin school doll or something it's a doll that somebody's like handing over to you and and you're amazed and all that and i think it's like it just makes you feel like super included or super welcomed and i that's the one thing that i i want to do in this hobby or not just in this hobby like in general in everyday life and stuff like whenever i have like i'm cleaning out my closet of doll stuff the first thing i do is i post on on instagram like i have this stuff for free just pay for shipping and you can have it or whenever I trade with somebody or anything, I always try to throw in as much extras as I can. Because, like, I feel like this is a really cool hobby if if you have, like, a great experience and it makes people not be as jaded or bitter 
like even if not just in this hobby but like in your everyday life so i think this hobby has like a good chance of making a lot of people like happy even with small things that's so nice. i think that's the thing that was that cheesy no 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 like i i, I saw the audio cut out for me yeah. a little bit i don't know if anybody else is having that um problem so i know my bandwidth is not the best <laughs> since coronavirus hit uh, but no yeah, i don't think the she... audio just got cut out a little bit at the end but overall your message is very nice very positive very different from when i first joined the hobby <laughs> it's very heartwarming and touching yeah. i have to say like i'm a little bit cynical actually i'm a lot cynical so <laughs> hearing it hearing is that good. is good when you actually make the good connections and i've had that you know obviously with avari nova um as well as some of our other friends like i'm very grateful for that too because at the end of the day it's like you don't just gain like doll friends you gain like friend friends and i've expressed this like you know even on our discord that you know I i'm honored that they you know trust some of the information that they share about their lives with me and i know that if we were just doll friends i, I wouldn't get to know that part of them so like at the end of the day like it's cool that dolls brought us together but it's like the friendships that will last probably longer than the dolls although with this crew probably not but <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree. Like dolls bring people together, but like other things, the actual person keeps you with them. Definitely. And it's cool because like, I know that like every now and then, like not every now and then, but when we talk as often as we do, we do bring up dolls, but it's like nowhere near us talking about other things like apparently we're talking about <laughs> batman and gargoyles today so <laughs> but yeah it's other stuff that you know that you know keeps the friendship um going so cool so do you have anything else you guys like to add to this because i think this was you know it was informative I, I i don't know what it's like for a man to experience things in the hobby because i'm obviously not a man and it, it shocks me that you know there's just some weird hurdles that, you know, that you've had to deal with that I probably won't ever have to deal with. And it's just, I'm just like, wow, that's, it's so interesting to me, but you know, thanks for sharing. Right. Like I didn't feel too nervous the first time I bought a male doll. So I think it was really interesting to hear your aspects on buying a female doll. No, I totally, look, I, I highly, highly recommend going out of your comfort zone. If something, if you like something, even if it's um, if, if it makes you feel a little uncomfortable because of certain things, I think you should totally do it because like it'll it'll make you want to experience more of that thing or more like buying uh, my dolls on Naruga encouraged me to go to IKEA and buy like a giant desk, and now I'm waiting on a machine. Now I want to sew dresses, which is weird, <laughs> but um, yeah, I have like I ordered a bunch of threads and. Like I'm going crazy buying all these. I'm looking at tutorials and all this stuff like all day on YouTube and, um, you, you know, might end up being really good at sewing though, so it's worth the shot. Right. I mean, here's hoping. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, I totally, I totally feel that, you know, if don't let, don't let like like discomfort of certain things stop you, or don't let like norms or whatever. Uh, limit you to what your hobby experience is like like I said whatever whatever you are whatever you interests you whatever like go for it as long as it doesn't hurt or offend other people like go out of your way <laughs> yeah. to like be a douchebag <laughs> yeah definitely That's fine, yeah. guys also join our discord <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I have to pluck it in every every episode <laughs> Yeah, it's good. It's a good group, and I always say that, but I think it's cool. Like, I think we've cute. all become really good friends. Yeah, we have and Avari's emotes. dropped some fun emotes in there that are iconic, already icon <laughs> status. So if you want to see what they are, you have to join the Discord. Check it out. So, yeah, so that's pretty much it from, from all of us today, and I'd like to thank Oz for hopping on and showing his beautiful face and sharing all of his wonderful experiences with us, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!